morning and welcome to our morning to worship. I'm Pastor Karen Marone, happy to be back with you um, on a, another occasion on this third Sunday of the Easter season. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please turn to hymn number 389, where our gathering when Christ is alive, let Christians sing. Through the waters of the flood, he delivered Noah and his family. 
through the sea, you led your people, Israel, from slavery into freedom. At the river, O oh God, from the very beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and your word, you created the world, called forth life in which you took delight. By the water of your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We give you thanks for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for your gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with water that sustains life. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Now, everybody out there who's been baptized, raise your hand. You're going to remember your baptism today with the help of these children. I know you're all jealous that they got sprinkled with water, and they're going to sprinkle you. So dip your flower into the water, go out and sprinkle, and make sure everybody gets a sprinkle. You might need to come back and get more water. Okay. <laughs> if you side out. <laughs> don't know water, just, just use it like a sprinkle. Yeah. Here, here, here. Okay. Yeah. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Sprinkle kind of, we don't want to take too long, don't forget what we're doing. <laughs> and I'll also have the short attention spans. So, dip it in, dip it in. Go back, go back over to that part. Start in the back. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Don't be shy. I'm going to help. Though he had decided to release him, 
But if you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murder against you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead, to this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect help in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also our rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold from all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This famous song this month's to me. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You, Lord, you Lord will us. How long will you desire my glory? How long will you love illusions? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I call. Forever then, and do not sin. See into your heart the silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices, and put your trust in the Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine abound. In peace I will lie down to sleep, for you alone, O Lord, may be rest here. Amen. Our second reading is from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. But we do know, if, what we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Joy, they were 
disbelief and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law and the prophets and the psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. The Gospel. Do you find it curious, as I do, the way that the resurrected Jesus identifies himself to the disciples in Luke's gospel? Look at my hands and my feet. Now here we have his startled and terrified friends staring at him in disbelief, wondering if maybe they should call Ghostbusters. And Jesus says, look at my hands and my feet. It's curious, isn't it? <clears throat> Wouldn't it seem more natural for Jesus to say, listen to the sound of my voice. Look at my face. Look into my eyes and recognize me. Do you think you would be able to recognize someone by looking at their feet or their hands only? My mother's sisters used to do this strange thing at every annual gathering. They would take a, two regular photos. With the first photo, everyone would turn around with their back to the Second photo, no shoes on, just feet, taking a picture of just feet. And then they would look at that photo and try to pick out whose feet are feet. My mom had nine sisters. Sometimes I couldn't even pick them out with blue men in their faces. <laughs> but Aunt Carol was always the easiest one to pick out from the feet photo because she had a childhood injury that left her little toe very misshapen. So she was easy to pick. Well, maybe it wasn't that girl. Maybe it was not worse. <laughs> but with, with those nine okay. people, even looking at faces, you could get this stuff. Hands and feet are usually not the first thing that we notice about one another. And yet, they are so telling of who we are. Several years ago at confirmation camp at, at uh, Luther Glen, I broke this finger. I fell off the wall and broke my finger. I had years, I had, not years, I had weeks of physical therapy and I still have, I think I had some arthritis in it. I think my couple was a little bit on that. Yeah. I have a lump on this finger. Maybe from all the writing I done through school. And a scar over here, early attempt at using this jackknife. And then I was born with these weird thumbs. It looks like a hammer. They're really good for making thumbprint cookies at Christmas time. But other than that, they're just weird. Well, I could go on with my hands, but that's probably not. Hands can tell a lot about us. And our feet too. I grew up in South Dakota. We don't get quite as much exposure as California feet. But feet are, are a good signs too. Hands and feet can tell a lot about a person. It's a great privilege and a blessing for me to stand in front of a congregation on a Sunday morning and place the body of Christ in those outstretched hands. 
I don't know what brings more joy to my heart. The outstretched hands that have seen generations of work and tasks and life. People who understand what life is, reaching out. Or those little hands that just are happy to be at the table, reaching out, saying, this is God's breath. I'm God's child. Give me blood. Give me God's breath. Hands really tell the truth. And we can do a lot to fix up our faces. We can get plastic surgery. We can use makeup magic. We can make our faces look pretty much like we want. But our hands just look the way they look. A nervous shaking, a clenched fist, deeply embedded dirt from hard work or care in the garage or in the garden, stained fingers from creative artwork or house painting. Hands do tell the truth about us. Look at my hands and my feet, Jesus said. And when they did, they saw everything that he had ever been for them. They saw these hands that had so many times blessed bread and blessed fish to feed the thousands and to share with the few, especially at that Passover dinner in the upper room with that small group of his followers. They saw the hands that mixed the mud and put it on the eyes of the blind man. They saw the hands that touched the bed of the dead man to stop that funeral procession. The hands that now placed that once again living boy back into his mother's arms. They saw the hands that gestured in his teaching and reach out to touch the lepers and the sinners with love and healing. They saw the hands of Jesus and his feet, the ones that carried him across the hills and the plains of Palestine, and even across the waters of the Sea of Galilee, taking good news into the hearts and homes of sinners and tax collectors and outcasts of all sorts. Looking at his feet, they remembered that woman who washed them with her, with her tears <coughs> and dried them with her hair. They remembered Mary who sat at those feet while her sister Martha urged her, yeah, to help with the work. They looked at Jesus' hands and at his feet, and saw now the wounds that just a few days before they were afraid to look at. When the soldiers threatened to pound nails into those hands and feet of Jesus, the disciples took off. They were pretty sure that what was happening to Jesus' hands and feet would soon be happening to their limbs as well. So they hid away where they couldn't see the wounds or hear the taunts of the crowd. And now, after the danger is past, Jesus says to his disciples, Now, look. Look at my hands and my feet. Jesus hadn't run away from the danger. He wanted them to look at his hands and feet. Those wounded limbs were a true sign of, Je of who Jesus was, of what he had suffered for them and for us. Maybe we would like to imagine the resurrected Jesus with a new body, all clean and shiny, but it was his wounded body, bearing the marks of the cross that allowed him to be recognized. We know what Jesus' hands and feet told about him. What about your hands? What about your feet? Where have they been? How have they served? Who have they 
they touched? What have they taught? Jesus says to the disciples, and that's us today, you are witnesses of these things. Now Luke uses in the, in the gospel text, Luke uses a very legal term when he says witness. You know what a witness does? If you go to court and you are a witness, you have a legal obligation to tell what you know. And now Jesus says to the disciples and to us, be a witness. Just tell what you have seen. This isn't about trying to convince somebody to of anything is simply telling in your words and more importantly how you live that Jesus loves you and is with you. When the world looks around me for Jesus, what they want to know of what a believing in the resurrection would look like, they look at the baptized. They look at us. They look at the body of Christ in the world. That's us. When somebody looks at you, at your hands and at your feet, and where those feet take you and where those hands work, your hands and your feet tell the world what you are witnessed to, that Jesus Christ resurrected and alive today, lives in us and loves us. Let me share a poem with you. It's based on the prayer of St. Teresa of Avila. She was a, a nun in the 16th century. And she wrote some beautiful passages. This is one of my favorite. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks with compassion on the world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks with compassion on this world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. I'm really happy that Marlene was able to find the music and the lyrics for the hymn of the day that we'll sing now which is based on this poem by St. Teresa. It's in our newest ELCA hymnal called All Creation Sings that was published a couple of years ago. And you are witnesses. So testify by being who you are. The body of Christ in the world. The body of Christ for Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. remain seated as we sing this song.
Let us stand and proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He is standing in heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. But I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life for us. Amen. Please be seated for the Christ. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. As we share the holy meal, that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us. Lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity abundant life. God of grace, hear our prayer. O God, our Creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Calm storms, bring water to parched places and protect the climate that this plant would sustain life in all its variety. God of grace, hear our prayer. O God, our Saviour, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty, especially Jolene, Arnett, Lynn, Danny, Katie, Vicky, Carol, Lorna, Candy, Sarge, Pat, Patsy, Donna, Jack, Sandra, Aldis, Carol, Michael, Marilyn, Lavetta, Dean, Amy, Joyce, Diana, the homebound, the emergency responders, and those grieving and anticipating surgery or tests. At this time, we also pray for those who name aloud or silently in our hearts. For peace and honor with that. God of grace, hear our prayer. O God, our center, you bring all people together you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our ministry. Move us to love our neighbours as ourselves and to share in the love community. God of grace, hear our prayer. O God, our resting place, your Son Jesus promised 
but we are held in your love forever. We remember our beloved who have died. As we remember and share their love, comfort those who mourn. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. In the gospel, we heard Jesus saying the very first words to the disciples in the upper room on that Easter evening. The first words Jesus said is, peace be with you. He didn't say, hey, how's, how's your week been? Or, how's it going? How you doing? Hello. He said, peace be with you. In the liturgy, this section, or this point in the liturgy, we have an opportunity to wish God's peace to one another. Save your hello, how's it going? For at the end of the service, this is an offering of peace. Headlines in the paper this morning um, was uh, about the uh, attack on, on Israel with the uh, drones. And that's the land where Jesus stood when he said, peace be with you. Peace be with you standing in this room. Peace be with the country. Peace be with the nation. Peace be with the world. So let us stand and offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And then also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Christ's peace. This time we remember that the giving of our offering is an authentic part of worship. <coughs> During this time of transition, your gifts of your time, talents, treasures, or a combination of them will sustain our ministries to the community and to our own family of faith. We give as God has given abundantly to us. Thank you so much for all the ways you give and help to make the ministries of this church possible. And let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day, you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us up to new life in Christ, give us the glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Christ Jesus, our Saviour and Lord. Amen. I'd like to invite Jackson to come forward. Where is he? All right. You can be very proud of Jackson, and, and I can be proud of this congregation. You're raising your own musician. <laughs> He's going to play for us a song that you won an award for this, didn't you? This song is called Rainbow Falls.
with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Like to have gluten free, 
uh, wafer instead of what is in the refrigerated cups. Uh, please indicate that as well. Um, we see, we consume the bread first and then turn the vessel over through the, the little lid and uh, consume the juice that, that is there. If you like it being brought to you, uh, Robert will come if you indicate by raising your hand that you'd like to have something come back rather than come to you. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
first time we've had someone come in to another lot to talk to the door. Well, we've never had any serious confrontations as a result. Council feels it prudent to update our safety protocols. Going forward, please be mindful of the following for your safety and that of the others. Exterior doors are to be closed and locked for members, guests, or staff are in the building. Please do not leave any exterior door propped open unless someone is personally at that door monitoring who's coming in. There are doorbells at the main door by the mailboxes here, uh, as well as by the fellowship on the door. And that, uh, those doorbells will let others know that you are there waiting to come in. During the worship services, the ushers are responsible for monitoring the sanctuary doors to be propped open for those arriving for worship services. The ushers must then close those doors to ensure that they are locked no later than 10 minutes after the service is start. When exiting any exterior door, and we've got signs up on the doors, I know you've all seen it, please ensure the door is shut, latched, and locked. If you use your key to open either the sanctuary door there or the door to the portico over on this side, when you unlock it from the outside with your key, that door remains unlocked. You must then relock the door handle uh, before you close it. Our intent is not to cause you any undue concern, but to, be, to address the realities of today to avoid unnecessary problems going forward. Please be mindful of these changes for your safety and that of the others here at the church. Please listen and play a part in keeping all who enter our facilities safe. If you have any questions or concerns about any of this, please see Diane or me or any council member after the worship service. Thanks so much. Please stand now to receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's sing together the sending hymn, the strike is o'er, the battle's done.
Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.